the best leaders, in my view, the best leaders are the ones who help other uh, human beings grow. All of us have our flaws and we're typically paralyzed by that. And when you show that you can have flaws, but still progress and achieve great things, then others get encouraged. Leaders are those that can inspire, uh, they can lead, they can have people follow and believe. Digitalization doesn't happen without leadership. How do you uh, grow in a software organization like a leader internally? You just help people. A very important quality is risk tolerance. Uh, you should feel comfortable with change and with taking risks. Uh, I think that's probably one of the reasons why uh, we as a, as a company, as a group of people, managed to, to produce so many innovations and to move at that speed because we would just, you know, give the overall direction and, and, and go and tell to the teams, go fight, do what you do best. Which would be the archetypes that we can use as, um, in leadership? Sovereign. The, the sovereign is in charge of the orchestra. Yeah, you have the conductor and each instrument plays its own role. But if they're trying to fight with each other or you just have you know, the, the violin when it's really meant to be the trumpet or the piano, it's, you're not going to get the best out of the symphony. I'm going to start with this question. Did leadership um, chose you as well or was it something that you anticipated at some point and when did this change or this career path uh, became something thinkable for you? Uh, great question. Um, I first will start with differentiating between management and leadership. And we often talk about this, like early in our careers, we learned to be great managers. And um, leadership is something that you could um, uh, develop from very young age uh, because leaders are those that can inspire, uh, they can lead, they can have people follow and believe. Uh, and um, many people have natural leadership skills, uh, and and this is this is really easy to build. I mean, you could be a leader in an individual contributor role, right, professional role, and you could be a leader as a manager. But being a leader is something. Uh, really important for us to be successful in any type of business. Um, however, leadership skills you can develop as well. Uh, particularly for me, um, early in my career, I was uh, in US and very fast uh, my career developed and I was given an opportunity to be a manager. And I, have to, I had to learn on the job, really. Um, with the years of experience, I started gaining those more people-oriented leadership type of uh, skills and focusing on those and really building on the top of the managerial skills. Mm -hmm. um, so um, am I a good leader today? That's something for everybody else to say, uh, but it's definitely something that I think is extremely important for each business. Did you manage to get some lessons from uh, your um, public service that you can apply leadership-wise in your in your company in Log Sentinel? Well, first, um, digitalization doesn't happen without leadership, and I kind of thought it might just go as a technical topic that yeah, we'll change those laws, we'll make these. Uh, systems and things will work, uh, they can't. You have to have uh, the thought leadership, the the person that is kind of recognized as the one that, uh, that knows how these things that can be done uh, and that convinces people and drives people's opinion that this is actually important. Because the e-government thing has been uh, unimportant for 20 years. It hasn't happened, not because, not only because there's corruption and incompetence and a lot of problems, but because there hasn't been leadership on the topic and it hasn't been important. Uh, yeah, some, some IT people will do some systems and will replace uh, the paper with a file. It sounds so boring in general. Uh, 
Uh, and so you have to have the, the leadership in that regard to, to make it happen. Uh, and back to whether it's, uh, that's, that's a valuable lesson for, uh, for startups, uh, yes. If you have a product, uh, by default, uh, it's not something that uh, is universally recognized as uh, something you need, because otherwise it would have existed uh, a long time ago as a government. Uh, so you have to have the, the thought leadership and uh, the drive to, to push that idea further, even though uh, it might uh, you might see disagreement, you might see people that are uninterested, that think that that's unimportant. Uh, you believe in that uh, and you have to lead the way to making this recognized. Whether that would result in a business success or not, sometimes uh, there have been cases in the startup world that someone pioneers something, someone drives some topic uh, uh, and some concepts uh, very far, and then their business fails for other reasons. Uh, but the industry, the niche is now explored. It's considered something that should be taken, and then someone else comes and, and creates a successful business out of it. Uh, but the role of the initial thought leader mm. uh, shouldn't be ignored. Which would be the archetypes that we can use as um, in leadership? Sovereign. Okay. The, the sovereign is in charge of the orchestra. Yeah, you have the conductor. And each instrument plays its own role. But if they're trying to fight with each other or you just have you know, the, the violin when it's really meant to be the trumpet or the piano, it's, you're not going to get the best out of the symphony. So if you go to mythology, you know, let's use King Arthur as a great example. King Arthur was the sovereign. He had Merlin, the magician, that was required to create the magic and the solutions and the spells required. But if the magician is on the throne, then you basically just have a party and not a lot gets done. If you just have the warrior on the throne, you have a dictatorship. If you have the lover on the throne, the borders are going to get overrun because you don't have the boundaries. You think everybody's your friend. Right? You just want to connect. Mm -hmm. yeah. So the sovereign is the person in charge. Now, the sovereign's role is to call upon the warrior. There's times where you need to attack or defend. There's times where the boundary, if the Vikings are invading, you need to call upon the army to serve its purpose in that role. Anderson Silva doesn't walk into the octagon as the lover. <laughs> I can promise you that. Yeah, it's going to be a very different outcome. Sure. <laughs> when you walk, I, I talk to some of the students when I teach my health and vitality retreats and we go, I take people to the gym to teach them the, the body transformation exercises that I, I train. I tell people, you, know, you, every personal trainer knows your mind is either your best training partner or your worst training partner. And so the quality of the workout is determined not by the exercise routine that you have. It's determined by who walks in the gym. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the magician is going to give you all the excuses why you've done enough and you can quit early. That's the magician's job. Yeah, you don't want to put the lover on the leg press when you're trying to do 400 kilos. I can promise you. <laughs> its association to pain is different. You want the warrior. But the sovereign is the person who holds the conductor's bat on. If the, th if the sovereign is on the throne, then the country runs smoothly because the sovereign can call upon the right resources at the right time. So when it comes to being a CEO, when it comes to having that startup, people will be mesmerized by the vision of the magician. Mm -hmm. uh, they, will, you know, they will have to believe in the fact that you've got what it takes uh, in terms of to get through the tough times uh, where you're going to draw on that warrior energy. You don't want a CEO that's a yes man or a yes woman. You're going to need somebody that needs to make the tough decisions when the tough decisions need making. But it's the sovereign. You need that, that air of leadership that is ethnocentric, that is doing this for the greater good, not your own ego, that understands the, you know, the emotions that the staff are going through and the, the turbulence that, and can guide them through it from a mentorship level of you know, sovereignty, not belittle them as not good enough warriors or, you know, come on, buckle up. So again, if you're looking at it through the four archetypes of the personality, and it's just different models of being able to work with this inner sense of energy that we have, then the CEO needs to have a strong sovereign. Otherwise, he's not going to be able to lead the ship when the waters get stormy. How do you uh, grow in a software organization like a leader internally? You just help people. Like, 
who is the usually the way you see the new leaders is the people who first take the initiative and the second is if there is a problem who people cluster over like for example when i was out of the office who is the pe- the person who takes over me and i intentionally didn't appoint that people just instinctively know yeah it's this person and you start helping people like if you help people that's the moment you you create empathy with them back and forth the way you mentor people that's how you create s- stuff and the third thing is re- real ab- you have to be re- reliable like you cannot become like an engineering leader in an organization if you don't ship your features on time or they don't work or your work suffers even if you help the whole team in the end of the day you you have to provide your your basic functions it's interesting for me personally as sure, uh, someone ahead. who is currently you know learning maybe uh managing others and myself and uh, mm-hmm. leading others there are sides of in our personality that sometimes don't really fit into the concept of uh, being the good leader <laughs> uh, and uh, we don't always manage to deal with them just because we recognize them just because we become aware of them in this sense when you lead by example and you are also aware of your deficiencies as a as a person mm-hmm. what is your recipe how do you practice accepting yourself improving yourself especially in the context of you being the leader in an organization yeah um it's a, it's a great question it's a very deep question um at least the way i perceive it because i've been struggling with this myself um for some time um and maybe even right now um uh, but i think that i've taken this under control to a huge extent um so i think that the best way to accept uh, ourselves with our flaws is by accepting the flaws of others as well and uh, understanding that we don't need to be perfect to create something good and something uh, purposeful and something meaningful um and it's part of human nature um to accept the flaws of others this doesn't mean to encourage them or to admire them but just to understand that each one of us is uh, working on his individual evolutionary path uh including the evolution of our mind mindset consciousness however we call it so allowing others to be imperfect and even showing your imperfections sometimes is actually i think a, a positive practice if especially if you demonstrate that you have the desire to change and you you're putting the effort to change in a positive direction which is a never ending process anyway so accepting yourself and accepting others and still being happy about the things that that you're doing and focusing on 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 your positives and doubling down on your strengths i think that this is inspiring and um uh, i've been listening myself and analyzing myself while listen to various type of motivational speakers um no matter if they're professional motivational speakers or just people who happen to motivate others and i think that one of the most powerful techniques they have either intentionally or unintentionally is to admit some of their flaws and still show that they can be a valuable person and they can produce something good and i think that this is the really empowering message because all of us have our flaws and we're typically paralyzed by that and when you show that you can have flaws but still progress and achieve great things then others get encouraged and when they get encouraged it becomes much easier to use this energy and to recycle part of this energy or to recur some of this energy into um, advancing their own level of of general perception of, of general consciousness and this on itself um recursively is improving all their uh, qualities and negating some of their traits in our part of europe it's always someone else to blame so someone is not providing me with uh the clients don't understand uh my employees the people that i work with cannot do their job so how did you manage to develop this mindset about okay i i'm here and i own it and I, you did it for 2 years I think it was the question of there not being anybody else. 
Um, of course, there are the external actors to blame, you know, the, nobody understands me and, and people just don't get it. Um, but also the fact that I couldn't rely on anybody else. Mm. Now that the team is expanding and we have some really great uh, members on the team, it's a matter of um, transmitting this to them and trusting them to own their part of the process. Uh, which has been hard, you know, I'm uh, usually it's very hard to earn my trust and I'm very distrustful just because I've been owning these processes for so long. Um, so for me to let go and to trust you for managing this or that part of the business takes a while, maybe around a year um, for me to fully let go. Um, but uh, yeah, you know, um, reliability is, is key for me, uh, for everybody on the team, um, to make sure that I can really trust them. And, and I really am lucky to have a bunch of really great people. We're talking about going in a direction. Um, it sounds like a leadership to me. What qualities do you value best in leadership? What are the things that a leader needs to have? The best leaders, in my view, the best leaders are the ones who help other uh, human beings grow. Other human beings become better and better versions of them, best, the best versions of themselves. As a leader, your job is to help others to grow as human beings. And the rest, the, the business and everything else happens automatically. A very important quality is risk tolerance. Uh, you should feel comfortable with change and with taking risks and uh and and just feel yeah comfortable when you are replacing the engine of the plane while you're flying <laughs> <laughs> it sounds horrible but sometimes you have to do that and and if you panic obviously the result will be <laughs> you, uh, yeah death um so the only uh, reasonable thing that you can do is to just stay calm and, 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 and push forward. And I think overall risk taking is something that, that can be improved overall in, in, in Eastern Europe and in Bulgaria. I think overall we, we have a very little tolerance for risk taking. Well, I think probably the two key things for me was uh, on one uh, level, uh, you know, respect and friendliness so we would treat everybody really like friends and and, and that was honestly the case uh we, we would not hide you know in our own office you know guarded by two secretaries etc you're one of the team you're in the trenches when times are tough uh we actually uh would uh, sit in different room with mm. different teams all the time you know just to mix even more with people so that was really important. You know, we were not bosses and employees, we were colleagues, pretty much all on the same level with very mm. little uh, hierarchical levels, especially in the beginning, um, which would actually provide for the second important aspect. And I think it's, it's, uh, it's freedom and empowerment. Um, because uh, I think that's probably one of the reasons why uh, we, as a, as a company, as a group of people, managed to, to produce so many innovations and to move at that speed because we would just, you know, give the overall direction and, and, and go and tell to the teams, go fight, do what you do best, do it yourself. We actually structure teams as individual units which are more or less self-sufficient. Uh, that's one of probably of our most clever early ideas. So you would have everybody in a, in, a, in a team that could deliver a product mm. from A to Z, you know, developers, QA engineers, uh, uh, technical support engineers, marketing people. We didn't really have sales, but marketing, technical writers, whatever. So all that group, you can take it, put it outside of the company and it can operate as a small company. Uh, but also about me personally, I realized that I was so much um, distributed in so many projects and lack of focus and chaotic and uh, losing myself in all this. So I started also looking for therapy, okay. uh, looking, uh, working with a coach. Uh, I've also escaped uh, Romania or Eastern Europe in the sense that I went to Asia for uh, several years in uh, January and December, the, the months which are less business oriented. 
to search uh, for more spirituality. So I you think... went to Asia because the, the last time that we spoke, I think you were in Guatemala. So <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> you've so traveled this is around. How I started okay. uh, being in Asia and uh, seeing how the community and how people are differently aligned because being surrounded by the startup world. And several years back, you could talk only startup topics with me. <laughs> so people were saying, I, I cannot talk anything else with you besides startup. Uh, but now, um, I, so then I realized that I was too much uh, focused on the, this, but also spread into many directions. Uh, I still am, but somehow the teams are taking over and uh, I have more time, personal time. And in the end, I don't have to whip myself if something doesn't work out. And I was also putting a lot of pressure on me, which is, uh, which is something that a lot of people do. And especially in the startup world, they need, they feel like they need to deliver and it's actually damaging and destroying on the long term. So now if I didn't reply in a client in the last month for something that he requested, I'm fine. <laughs> Back then I couldn't sleep at night or so. It's not the end uh, of the world. Okay. So um, I'm just, you know, trying to, to wrap up, you know, all the good, you know, tips that you're giving me and yeah. maybe also to those who are watching us. So not being a control freak, you know, let go yeah, of yeah. control, be more the catalyzer in a project, mm -hmm. um, start things in a partnership, manage yeah. relationships. Um, don't, uh, yeah, realize that, you know, the world is not going to end if you don't yeah. reply to this important yeah. email right away. Okay. Uh -huh. um, and search for yourself yeah, in a way so. and that's a wrap for season one of the recursive podcast and stay tuned we're coming back and with some great conversation with the bucharest innovation community and if you are just as passionate about innovation as we are hit subscribe for the recursive podcast on youtube or your favorite podcast platform we're everywhere